Hey there, everybody. Um, sorry for uh, um, sorry for being late. Um, yes, I've got home from work a bit late and had a few things to do, but um, we're excited and we're going to uh, look at the word. Um, we're up to study three, and um, um, we might do a quick rehash of what mm. we looked at already. Um, and then we'll uh, continue on with the with, with our next next study in our series of the good news. Um, for those that haven't seen it, um, it is on the page. So if you back up, just scroll down the page, you'll find the videos that we've done already in our study series. Um, Roy and HG. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're not from Australia, you're not going to have, have a clue who Roy and HG Look them are. up. <laughs> Look them up. <laughs> yeah, Roy and HG. <laughs> we should be the sporting venue. Yeah. Talking about the cricket. But um, uh, the first, the first thing we looked at was was Luke uh, four forty three, which talked about the good news. Jesus basically said that there was good news. Yeah. And it talked about the fact that uh, the good news was this kingdom of God. And that was the first and hey, Mark Luke. And I'll just have a quick Luke four forty three and he says I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also because that is why I was sent. So he says he's, he must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. And so the kingdom of God is this good news. And I guess then the next, as we go through this bookmark, um, which is a really useful thing to have scriptures all worked out in advance so that you can, um, you've got a framework to, to go from. But it talked, we talked about light and darkness. And somebody asked us, what does light mean? And it was a good question. And I asked a friend of mine the same thing today and he said, well, light, it, it illuminates and it, it, uh, it shows us the, I guess, I think what he was saying was that it illuminates some of the spiritual world that surrounds us and shows us the sin that entangles us, shows us the way to go. Um, it helps us to understand yeah. life and, and how life was meant to go. But we looked at um, the fact that Jesus was um, God in the flesh, that he was the Word, that the Word became flesh. Yeah. Um, we looked at John 10, which said that Jesus was the Good Shepherd and yes. that he came to give us a full and abundant life. Yeah. We looked at Psalm nine, which 19, which said that the Scriptures give us, see if I can remember them, Steve, wisdom, joy, and it refreshes the soul. Yeah. Um, More precious than gold. Yep, sweeter than honey. Yeah. We looked at 2 Timothy 3, which said that all Scripture is God-breathed. So if it's God-breathed, then we can rely on it. Yes. You know, we're not asking you to trust me or to trust Steve. Yeah, that's um, correct. Or any man, for that matter. No. But the Word of God is, is the foundation. Yeah, And that's even right. Jesus actually referred back to the Scriptures when he was on the planet. Yeah, that's right. He often did. Um, and then John 8, basically Jesus says, Do you know what? If, if you hold to my teaching, then you will be set free. Yeah. Or then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So yes. Jesus kind of throws out the gauntlet and he says, Do you know what? You can learn this stuff. You can believe it. But it's only when you're going to find out whether it's real or not. That's right. Um, and then we looked at... Last week last week then we looked yeah. um yeah i believe in god and trust no one that's right yes um, well unless it's a brother and he's you know even the holy spirit yeah. counsels us hopefully you can trust us Mick. <laughs> yeah the, you know the anyway but the point's right i get get what yeah. you mean god's um salt and light the, tr the truth god had a plan for us in the beginning yeah and so the plan was that that we are you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Yeah. Um, we looked at 
the story of the Good Samaritan. That's right, yes. And how a lot of the religious leaders had walked around yeah, the guy that needed him. help. Mm. Um, and it was the good. It was the Samaritan, the man that people hated, that did yeah. the right thing. And, and Jesus says, do you know what? Well, whether you're religious or, or otherwise, he said, he really values the person that does the right thing. That's loving yeah. your neighbor. Um, we looked at Isaiah, which talked about, you know, feeding people, clothing them, yes. shelter, yes. um, and and then we looked at uh, judgment when Jesus was in the judgment seat, mm. and he separated the sheep from the goats based on yeah. the things that Isaiah talked about, the things that they did or didn't do. You know, he says, "When did you feed me? When did you give mm. me a glass of water? When did you visit me in prison when I was sick?" Yeah. Um, and he says, whenever you did that for the least of one of these, you did it for me. Yes. Mm. So all, everything that we do in that sense, you know, of helping others is recognized. Isn't yeah. It? It's a... Uh, and, and then last of all, we looked at Corinthians in 13, and it just talks about if you, if you do all of these things, but you do it without love, yeah. then you're just a clanging gong and... Resounding... Resounding symbol. gong or yes, clanging, clanging symbol. <laughs> yeah. You, you were just a, you know, you you, you can just have everything. Noise. It says everything, everything, you know, everything. The world, you can have the, everything. You can have the greatest of all things. Yeah. But the knowledge. You can have all the knowledge. You can have everything you want. But if you don't have love, you have nothing. Mm. So all of, Jesus had a plan that we loved our neighbour, that we did good deeds. Yeah. But he says, do you know what? If you do it, and you you don't do it in a spirit of love. It's it's pointless. Yes. And that leads us to. To our sin, our study this evening, which is um, we're going to get into sin and and well, sin and death. Let's let's have a have a look at what the Bible actually says. What is sin? You know, do we do we know what it is? You know, like um, you know, a lot of us have a, a conscious conscience. You know, that will uh, prompt you if you if you do the wrong thing or. Um, you know, you might feel like you're doing the wrong thing about something, but what does the Bible actually say about what is right and wrong? Mm. Um, so we'll start at uh, um, the book of Romans um, in chapter 3.23. So if you've got a Bible with you, um, open it up to Romans, which is the New Testament. And yeah. It's uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Book of Acts, and then there's Romans. Yeah. You know, I heard Steve um, that the word sin means that you've missed the mark. Yeah. You know, sort of, you know, following God, it's like you're hitting the bullseye, and um, yeah, that's full points, full marks for doing that. But as humans, we fall short. We miss the mark. Yes. And. Um, that's interesting. It did, is. Did you want to read that or? Uh, yeah. Oh, I've got it. Or you can. Yeah, if you've got it. Yeah, so Romans 3.23. Yeah. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes. So, what there is, is no difference. Means? It says, just before that, that tiny little section, it just says there is no difference between all of us. Mm, between Jew and Gentile. Yeah. Mm, all of us. Yeah. For all of us sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, so I think even if even if we think, well, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I'm a pretty good guy. You know, I'd, I'd, I'm polite. You know, I treat people well. I'm, I respect people. I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a good guy. So, mm. you know, that's what it, that's what, that's all I need to be, he's just a good guy, you know. But our version of a good guy and God's version of a good guy are pretty different things. But what the point here is, is that no matter how good a guy we are, <laughs> um, according to the glory of God, you know, God's standard being you know, way, way, way high, we can never really obtain it. And mm. for that reason, we all fall short because we're all sinners. So we're all in the same boat. Exactly. You know, it's good. It's, um, so I guess one of the good things about this is that it's not like we're saying, you, yeah. you filthy sinner. Yes, we're all, in this, like, we're all in this it's together. Like we're all in the same boat. We That's are. right. And, and, but the fact is that everybody has sinned. 
And then when we jump ahead to Romans 6, 23, it says, well, it says for the, the results of sin here. Okay, so we all know that we all fall short. Um, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So, pretty straightforward, really. I mean, I'm not sure that there are many ways you can interpret that. It's pretty straightforward. The wages of sin is death. Um, you know, death extends past death <laughs> without getting too complicated. You know, that's, well, of course we're all going to die. But, um, what you know, yeah, the gift that we have here is um, yeah. is eternal life through Christ Jesus. This is a little bit, um, there's some different views on this, so um, feel free to share them as as we go. But yeah. one of the things that I think I've come to a personal belief in is that when uh, the Bible says here <laughs> that the wages of sin is death mm -hmm. um, and the gift of God is eternal life, I actually think that it means death in the, the next life spiritual death yes. um, that yeah. that hell as as the denominational world or dante's hell has presented this eternal place where you're forever and forever in this terrible place um, i actually think that this verse teaches us that there is death in the next life um, every knee will bow, every yes. tongue will confess, everybody will be raised from the dead and stand before God and be judged. There will be the weeping and gnashing of teeth you know, as people realize that they've fallen short, that they're not going to heaven. But I do think that this verse sort of is one verse that yeah. says, do you know what? The wages is, is death. And that's mm. this physical death, but it's a spiritual death. Yeah. And really, I think this lends itself to that uh, and there's a big study that we can do at another time. Yeah. But it says there's two choices. One is death, and the other one is eternal life. Yeah. So the gift is eternal life. Yeah. If everybody had eternal life in one place or another, yeah. that wouldn't be the gift. You know, the, the actual gift is eternal life. Yeah. Um, but that that's interesting. That's yeah. talking about the afterlife but for now yeah it I says, read, you know, we're all sinners yeah i and, want to read just yeah. read a little just a little commentary that's in in my particular bible which i think is quite pertinent to to gifts you know how we look at a gift yeah, it says consider the foolishness of someone who receives a gift given out of love and then offers to pay for it like um read that again you yeah, consider the foolishness of 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 somebody giving you a gift and then you say, oh, look, I'll pay for that. Okay. You know, it no longer is a gift. You know, we can't pay for it. It wouldn't be a gift. We're actually robbing that person, if you like, of the ability to give. So when we, we are giving gifts, we should receive them graciously mm. and, and thankfully. And that's exactly what God wants from us. Nothing other than that. So there's nothing that you can do to earn it. You can't earn this. You can't be super smart or super wise or super good. You can't do it. It's just a gift. It's purely a gift. And, you know, it's that gift of salvation. It really should prompt us to want to do the good things in life and want to do the right things. But there is a problem. And the problem is that God set this model of us being like Jesus or, or being like Adam and Eve in the garden. Yeah. Um, he wants us to be, you know, love God, love our neighbor. But there's a problem. And the problem is that all of us, all of mankind has fallen short. And there's a penalty for that. And the wages or the penalty of that is death. Yeah. And so we've got a problem. And I guess it, it begs the question, well, what is sin? Yeah, you know, and, and uh, so the next verse that we're going to look at is Galatians five. Some people would know that as where the fruit of the spirit is, um, 
Galatians 5.22. So just a couple of books after Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, and then you've got Galatians. Mm. If you're following along, you can always Google the answer. But Galatians 5, it's interesting. People say, well, what is sin? And the, the modern age, the new age philosophy would say, there is no sin. No. You know, whatever exactly feels what right says. for you is is it, fine. Yes, it's okay. It's okay. And it's, I, it's your own truth. Yeah. You know, which is just a crazy thing. You know, I've met people, um, you know, over the last few years, actually, that are heavily into um, the new age. You know, and, and, and it's, it's such a, uh, a love of yourself, you love yourself, you, there's the main priority, you have to love yourself, so whatever feels right for you is right. So it doesn't matter who you hurt or who you upset by, if I just decide right now, this doesn't feel right, I'm going. You know, to new age believers, they say, that's fine because, you know, it's, you're not in that place right now where you feel like doing this. You know, I, I believe then that leaves a whole heap of people um, that are watching right now going, well, what's that all about? You know, Rod's sitting there scratching his head going, hang on a minute, Quinny. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> what are you doing, mate? Yeah, so, you know, I find that it, it actually boggles my mind the, to the lengths that people will go on this journey of self-love. Mm. And um, it's a very hollow journey, I can assure you. But um, if we're going to... Galatians 5, 19, 20, 19 to 21. Mm. Let's have a look at, at what the acts are of sin. What's the sinful nature produced? Mm. Oh, it says the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. And I like that. And that right yeah, there is kind of like, too. you know what? It's pretty obvious. You know, you don't steal. You don't punch somebody in the face. Yeah. You don't sleep with their wife. Yeah. You know, you don't go and rob a bank. Yeah. You, know, you don't commit murder. Yeah. A lot of the things are quite obvious and but nevertheless, you know, scripture does list them out in several places. Yeah. Um, but it says the acts of the flesh they're obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's a long list there. Yeah. He says that it's obvious, so we don't have to go into a lot of detail to say this is what sin is, but... Look, a quick we'll, rundown we'll of run what, down what, them. Yeah, what we'll, they mean. We will do a quick rundown. So there's sexual yeah. immorality, which is what? Which is obviously, yeah, we, well, it's not obvious. Well, it is, actually. It um, is obvious. It's obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. Uh, sexual immorality is obviously um, sex outside of marriage. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the God created um, marriage to be, you know, a purity, a pure thing between a man and a wife. And, and, um, you know, it was not for sexual mm. fun outside. God, God in, yeah, God invented sex and he wants people to enjoy it. Um, he had a model there so that it would be enjoyed <laughs> in, in marriage. Yeah. And, and that's great. And I think that by abstaining until you're married, what people focus on is this, the friendship yeah. that, that sits behind a... a Special yeah. relationship, it's sacred. Exactly That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, he talks about impurity. Impurity, I think, refers to Im impure thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, having thoughts that go through your head. It could be pornography. Um, just lusting after women yeah. or men. Um, so yeah, impurity. Yeah. Um, debauchery is overindulgence. Overindulgence. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, even more really than you need, I guess, and um, you know, being um, you know the the guy that at the party that 
hasn't had enough, so he, he brings a doggy back, <laughs> <laughs> scoops it all up and takes it home. <laughs> I'm just silly. Uh, you know, you could debauch, you could debauch here, on reading what... this too, you know, I think. You know, debauchery is just too much of too much of anything. Yeah. And if all you do is just read the Bible and that's all you did, yeah. you probably neglect a lot of things that, yeah, that you should be doing. I mean, debauchery is, what did you say? It was... Um, it's a, a, a overindulgence. Of, yeah. Of, yeah. Idolatry. Um, well, idolatry is, you know, is idling. Is the idol something, you know, worshipping something like, I, I guess, um, you know, put one example... Like, I, put I something being, before God. Yeah, that's simple enough, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's putting something before God, you know. It's also um, a, a step a further as well. I think in that it becomes your love, you know. Like um, some people, that can be money, you know, wealth, you know, fame, your girlfriend, your girlfriend, hobby. Could be anything at all. Yeah. Idolatry, um, witchcraft. Now, it's interesting. Somebody pointed out to me only a couple of years ago that the etymology of the word witchcraft or the root of the word was a pharmakia or pharmacia or something which is the word that we use for pharmacy mm. and we all know we can all conjure up in our imagination what witches do and you know boil boil yeah. toil, boil and trouble or whatever it is yeah. that shakespearean witches said Frogs and snails Frogs and puppy and... dogs tails. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and we know that kind of witchcraft. But the root of this word pharmacia, I mean, witches would make potions. And I think somebody suggested to me that maybe this word is what, um, where we get the uh, learning, if you like, that we don't do drugs. Mm. You know, pharmacy. Um, moving on, though, hatred. Yep. Discord is um, if you think of playing a guitar note or a musical note and there's a note that's out of tune, there, there's discord and I think with people. Which wrecks um, the whole song. Yeah, it wrecks the song, that's right. And, and but It's the same with life. You can have um, you know, somebody that's argumentative or wants to focus on their own agenda and not considering everybody around them and that can create discord, you know, in the sense of, you know, it should be my way, my way, my way. Yeah, yeah. That, um, uh, uh, that's an that's one part or element of this chord. And then there's jealousy, and you know I know that when people when we're looking at other people and we're thinking, gee, I wish I had that, and why can't I have that, and mm. why don't you give me that, Steve? Yeah. And we get jealous. We're um, we get into a, a negative frame of mind. Yeah, it's negative. And, it is. It's negative, and you know. It, People, people can consume themselves with that type of thing and wanting more and, yeah, and just never, the thing is it never satisfies you you can't you know you can't every every year comes a new television every year comes a new car every year comes the latest mm. you know if you, if you why are you looking like Steve? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to get me anywhere <laughs> just got to learn to be content with what you've got yeah. right um Fits of rage. <laughs> yeah, fits of rage. Fits of rage. I mean, man, getting angry. Um, yeah, boy, how destructive is anger when, you know, when you're in a fit of rage, especially in a relationship, you know, not even in relate, just in, in friendships in general. Gee, we can, you know, say really cutting nasty things mm -hmm. to people. And then there's selfish ambition. Um, what do you reckon about that? Um, selfish ambition it's kind of like you know I think it's all about me doing everything for me yeah. you know, putting yourself before everybody else Yes. then there's dissensions, dissensions and factions, factions. Um, you know where we're split off out against other people and it's like the Labour and the Liberal Party all that they ever do is cut it's each other down it? oh it's terrible Yeah. They, they, you know, they can't support each other on Grounds of just being oppositional. <laughs> mm. Then there's envy. Yeah. Um, and again, envy doesn't. Uh, it. You know, if I again, if I look at Steve and I envy the fact that he's got a better car than I've got, um, it doesn't. You know, I, I could celebrate. 
you know, we we could all we could celebrate the and be happy for other people for the, yeah. some of the things they've got, but envy just puts you in this negative space, and you end up at loggerheads with other people, yeah. drunkenness, orgies, and the like. So he says, do you know what? And and the like, mm. and which goes back to this it's obvious. He goes, here's here's a list, but there's other things like that. Yeah, and I think that. Um, just says that people that live like this might inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah. Go I'll on. just give a quick. Cause rather than because there's other places as as Roger pointed out that you know talk about what sin is, but I've just got a little list here that it's it's been collated throughout the scriptures, and it includes extra things in there like lust. There's hatred, discord, jealousy, anger, selfish ambition, dissension, arrogance, envy, murder, idolatry, witchcraft, drunkenness, wild living, cheating, um, adultery, homosexuality, greed, stealing, and lying. Mm. Yeah, they are all added in. Should we share the... No, no, because we'll just focus, we'll just we'll focus, focus on that. Yeah. Um, so, Gee, you know, we we talked before about uh, last week about salt and light and how yeah. I've just got a big possum over there in the tree. Just there. Oh, there he is there. Yeah. He's trying to catch in or cash in here. He, he thinks that he might learn something. <laughs> but, um, you know, we looked here at, um, in Matthew. Jesus we'll said talk about that, Mick. Um, salt and light study. And he said, talked about the sheep and the goats. Interestingly, when he spoke of the sheep and the goats, he went on in Matthew 25, 41. He said, then last week we saw that Jesus said, come in, you good and faithful servants, those who have, you know, put a shirt on somebody's back, given them a meal, given them shelter, visited them in hospital or, or jail. Um, but then Jesus goes on and he says, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink I was a stranger and you did not invite me in I needed clothes and you did not clothe. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me they also will answer Lord when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do, one of the least of these you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Mm. So, um, Michael's just said, you know, I'm the light follow me and there will be no darkness and and that's right and i think yeah. that's pretty much what jesus was saying yeah he's like follow me i'm the light you'll see where you're going the um, paths will be clear clear path yeah and um yeah it is. but yeah. but it's interesting here sin was based on it, it, in this parable on things that we did or didn't do, some of the choices that we make yeah. every day in life, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and these things are eminently possible, as as we love our neighbour. Um, and in the interest of keeping keeping moving, because we're going to lose light here. Yep. But in Matthew twenty-five, we go into forty-one which to you forty-six, just read that, yeah. which you just read and done such a good job of it. That Steve that, wanted to reinforce that I wanted where we to read do it. it again. That's right. <laughs> um, but um, if we look at if we look at James, the next verse. So again, some of these things are obvious, and we know them, yeah. and so we don't have to. It's one of those studies that that's really important to to touch on because it separates. Sin separates us from God. It does. But it's, there is um, James 4, 17. James 4, 17. Yes, very important. Um, 
Oh no, okay. Are you already there, are yeah, you? Yeah, will I do it? Yes, please. Just go there goes that possum. There he is, he's off up yeah, there. Yeah, climbing up the trees, a big boy. I'll try and, I'll try and show him, but... Yeah, um, yeah I don't think he'd get a good, no, good look on him. It's too dark. But it, um, it says if anyone then knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Yeah. So, again, you know, there's good that we know that we could do that we don't do. And the Bible just says, do you know what? That's sin too. If you know that you should do some good, do it. You know, love your neighbour, be a good citizen, whatever it means for you to be yeah. doing the right thing. Yeah, so you uh, do it. In, look, in looking at it in that sense, you don't actually have to do anything to sin. Yeah. So simply do nothing. Uh, that's right, yeah. When, when you know that there's, there's good that you could be doing, especially if it's in front of you, you know. Um, I don't know what the example may be, but there's, there's probably plenty of examples. You it could know. be picking up your room so that your wife or ch or children don't have to do it. Or yeah, yeah, it could be something as simple as that. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So but without, well, without um, Jesus, um, we were we were in trouble. We are. So sin is missing the mark. And, and doing things our way, being, I think one of the, the sins of Adam and Eve was pride. You know, they wanted to be like God. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think our sin is pride, you know, wanting to do it ourselves and not being like a child and trusting God. Um, the last verse in this is Revelation 21, verse 8. Yeah. Um, have you got and it that? says, it says, but the cowardly... The unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulphur. This is the second death. The second death, obviously, is is um, after is when Christ comes back. Yeah. So, you know, the chaff will be separated from the wheat, so to speak. So we'll, you know, we'll either go up or we'll go down and you know that so it, as Roger said it's very important that we understand what sin is because temptation exactly um, is you know how do we know you know how to live our lives how should we try to live our lives look like let's not make a mistake here we're all sinners mm. half of us have been or more have been sexually immoral moral we've all told lies at some point in time we've you know, some of us are stolen. I don't know how many of us are murdered, but I, there ain't too many watching that are murdered. But, mm. <laughs> but murder is, you know, I mean, we can go into detail with all all of them. But the point is that it says that everybody falls short for a reason, and that's because we do. We yeah. all, yeah, you know, we've all we're all sinners. Yeah. Okay. So this is not about. This is about understanding what sin is mm. and what the wages of it are, and that's death. And acknowledging that we're all in the same and we're all in the boat, same boat. Yeah. So one of the one of the verses, or one of the or one of the sins in here that I think is really super challenging. But it says the cowardly. Yeah. And do you know what? To follow Jesus takes courage. Yeah. And I think isn't that interesting? It's like when you flip that around. Yeah. You need courage to follow Jesus to stand up. Mm. To make a stand, to to yeah, fight against the the mainstream. Yeah, I mean, how many times have you heard people say, "Oh, you know, I've heard people say before, you know, I've been a Christian, it's just a crutch, because mm. you can't stand on your own two feet. You need to need something to help you prop you up." But that's not the truth. It, it, you know, I I invite it because I comment a lot. Some of you guys will notice that, you know, if you if you're on Facebook, you know, I often get into discussions about. God and people hammering me with their science books and stuff, you know. But um, you know, I'm passionate about it. And I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with everything I have, and you know, I'll defend it. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm courageous there, but I'm I'm definitely trying not to be cowardly. And mm. and there's no way somebody can say to me, Queen can't believe that it's silly or you can't believe that whatever i'll believe it uh, because i do standing up for social I, justice I will and, always 
thing takes a lot of courage to be sticking your neck out. Yeah. It says that this is, the, it talks about the second death here. And I just think that it's interesting, this second death. Have you got a line there? Um, I do. Um, I'm just going to see if this works. We're trying all sorts of... <laughs> <laughs> We've put a different spin on this study. <laughs> I wonder if that's going to work. It looks like we're around in the campfire. <laughs> yeah, which is great. We've got an outdoory feeling about it. Yeah, we're, that's right. We're in touch with nature here. <laughs> uh, we're, we're loving the nature. And, um, it's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. <laughs> oh, it's terrific. I love it. Hang in there with us. Um, <laughs> but it is interesting, you know, this verse talks about... Um, this uh, here it talks about the second death yeah. and i kind of think that you know again going back to the romans verse that says the wages of sin is death you know it talks about judgment but then it talks again about this second death yeah and do you know whatever your particular view of that is um you know what hell is etc doesn't change the fact that we've all fallen short and that there is a penalty for it that there's judgment that comes and I think being in the light you know, the yeah. light sort of warns us and it shows us the true situation and the true situation is that, that God is a righteous judge he's a, he's a good judge and he can't leave sin unpunished because that would God would cease to be righteous if he did that yeah. um, but it says you know if we summarize sin is what sin is it says we have all sinned and that there's wages of sin and yeah. that the penalty of sin is death yes um it says sin is obvious yeah do you know people say well what what is it and you say well we already know what it is yeah. you know even the world even i've been to court with people um as a support person before and even the judge says mind your language to people in the yeah. courthouse you're not yeah. allowed to swear even yeah and it's like she's she's a judge in a courthouse they understand uh what yeah. the, what the benchmark is it's obvious um if it doesn't feel right it probably isn't yeah you know it's it's really that obvious isn't it mm. you know matthew talked about the sheep <laughs> and the goats i <laughs> just is there anybody out there? <laughs> uh, look, it was a great idea. It I seemed like a good idea at the time, didn't it? It did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good. We just have to start half an hour earlier. Um, but, you know, we talked about the, the sheep and the goats. Yep. And, again, Jesus judges based on how we live our lives. Yeah. And um, there you go. You're blocking me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, yes, and James does. reminded us that, or Steve actually put it beautifully. He says it doesn't have to sin doesn't have to be something that you do. It can be something that you just neglect to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, Revelation talks about a lot of it lists those sins out again. But one one in particular that stands out to me is cowardice. Mm. And because it sort of it, it challenges us to step up and to be brave. Yeah, it does. To be courageous, and yeah. um, I think that's yeah, it's a it's a good challenging. Yeah, and uh, nothing that's really worthwhile. I mean, everything. I should rephrase that. Everything that's worthwhile takes it often takes a bit of pain, of some sort. You know, even uh, learning in the guitar. <laughs> I know my fingers get really numb. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it takes effort. Ever anything that's worthwhile takes effort. Yeah. Yeah, but there is good news over here, right? There is good news because sin sin does separate us from God. And it, it is important to know that. So that's the point of of this study. And to, uh, uh, the point is as well is to know what it is. You know, like, like you know, people say, "Well, I'm not. A, I'm not a sinner. I don't sin." No, I've never sinned. What have I done? I haven't, I haven't killed anyone. 
You haven't raped anyone. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not a thief. You don't tell a couple of lies even there, but mm. you know, it doesn't make me a bad bloke. You know, that's how, that's how we, a lot of us look at it, you know. But the, the fact is that without Christ, you know, what was that old example you used to talk about, you know, if you're up in the sky and you're looking down at, you know, at different heights of, say, posts or trees, they all look the same height. Uh -huh. To God, you know, they're all the same. A sin is a sin is a sin. You know, it's it, God's standards are very, very high and we can't accomplish them. So, mm. you know, glory be to our Lord Jesus Christ. And and um, next, next week, um, We'll look at, uh, well, let's have a look at next week. We'll look at what do we need to do about this? You know, if we're people that, um, um, that haven't decided to, to make a stand and, and really there's a bit more to it, but really it's all about belief. It's about faith. You know, faith is a comforting thing. Faith, faith is not a labor. You know, it's not, you know, I just, I wish I had faith. Or I wish, it's not something that, we get we can get down about it. Something that's great, mm. you know. To have faith is great. It's it's a not to worry about the things that you can't handle or you can't control, you know, or that you have no control over is is faith. Mm. You know, that, that's what that's what gets us across the line. This week, what we'll look at is um, the cross, I guess, the blood, the significance of Jesus' sacrifice, and for give us um, so we'll look at what what's the solution that god that god gave us <laughs> so eerie i feel like i'm in a campfire it's great yeah yeah has but, anyone got any uh, marshmallows <laughs> <laughs> we're trying uh, and mix things up a bit for your entertainment yeah but um you know it's, it's interesting there is sin there's a consequence of sin, yes. but there's a solution as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what's important is that we understand what that solution is, and yeah. and God's provided that to us. Yeah. Um, if you can't wait till next week, um, you know, feel free to drop Steve a line on Facebook, and and he can connect with you. Yeah. But um, but certainly, faith is hope. It is. Um, it is, Mick. Absolutely, mm. that's what it is, you know. And that's such a uh, that's such a, uh, a a pertinent statement. You know, people lack hope. I think if you know, if you hope God is gone, you know, it's a term a term hopeless comes into mind. You know, then then being without hope, we're, we're in trouble. You know, but through faith, we always have hope. You know, it doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how bad things can get. We always have hope, and faith, as well, you know, is is just to give it up, to say, God, I can't, I can't do it. Mm. I, I, I believe that you'll look after me. I believe I'm giving you my life, or I'm giving you my heart, I'm giving you my belief, and I'm going to have faith. I'm going to live my life. Now, that's how I've had to live my life. Mm. That's what's worked for me in the past, and that's what I count on in my life. So there's a verse, I think we did a verse um, early on. If we didn't, basically what it, I think we did, it's where Jesus says he was the good shepherd. And he says that the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. Yeah. And when we look at sin, people tend to look at sin like uh, adultery or sexual immorality or drunkenness uh, to pick some of the easy ones. Yeah. And, and they uh, think that that's going to make them happy. Yeah, I think, gee, that's that's my ticket to joy and my yeah. ticket to to contentment. Yeah, but there's a hook, and yeah. there's this there's this um, ramification yeah. from sin, and that leads us to to misery, and it leads to yes. broken families. It does to hangovers, to you know, to a well, loss of just, money. You know, uh, uh, drunkenness, for example. Yeah, you know, we've all had our well, not all, but I'm sure a lot of us have had our time getting drunk. Um, but some of the, you know, I've met people in my life that um, that have woken up in a prison cell and not having a recollection of what happened the night before 
in one case a bloke shot his best mate and um, and uh, he did 10 years for it and uh, doesn't remember any of it nothing mm. he just woke up the next day he, he got so drunk and mixed it with you know pills and and did some really crazy stuff and um, yeah, I, you know, I knew that guy. He was a good guy, actually. Yeah. He just made a really, really bad decision and, and had a really, really bad night. And it cost him 10 years of his life. Yeah. So, you know, the thief. Uh, sin is the thief. Yeah. And, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy um, our joy and our happiness and our peace and our contentment with God. So the acts of the sinful nature, the things that we know to be sin, um, that might appear, you know, not all that glitters is gold, as they say. And, yeah. and I think that um, sin glitters like gold, but yeah, it's it, has a, it has in a lots of ways. sting in its tail. Yeah. So it brings grief. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the mozzies are coming out. And the campfire has gone out. Yep, we're ready. <laughs> yeah. But um, stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll be back next week, and um, on Sunday, uh, yeah, we'll we'll be streaming again our um, home church service, and yeah, we, we look to make them get a little bit more meaty. Yeah, in our homes, in home church. Sure. Yeah. We follow it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, maybe we can use it to reiterate what we talk about to some extent. Yeah, well, I'm thinking out loud here and inviting you into my thoughts. <laughs> Probably hope if I spoke to Roger about it <laughs> beforehand. But, it's uh, all look, good. it's all good. It it's is. all good, yeah. Well, listen, um... anyway, sorry for making everybody wait. Um, this will be posted online. You'll be able to read back through it. I really want to encourage anybody that has any questions, please ask, you know, we, I don't, you know, I'm, I learn every day, you know, this, the Bible says that it's living active for a reason, and I believe that you can open it at one day and you'll read a certain scripture and it doesn't resonate, and then, you know, a couple of months down the track you'll read the same scripture and you go, wow, is that what that means? It's because it is living and active, because there's always, you know, there's a different time for a different need. And, you know, that's why I'm, you know, 20 years, uh, look, I haven't been reading it constantly for 20 years, but, you know, I've been a Christian for 20 years, Roger's been a Christian for a lot longer, um, and, you know, we're still learning, mm. we're learning all the time, so when you ask us questions, um, you know, it helps, it helps me as much as it helps you. Um, and yeah. if we don't know the answer, we can go back and, and, we'll and figure it out, out or, or do our best. Yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. We we'll... still don't have the answers to no, we've... loads. No, that's right. But what we do have and what we can give you uh, right now in particular is the gospel. And yeah. that's really the, the most important thing in my mind for the whole of the Bible is is uh, is, the, is preaching the gospel. You know, all the rest of... Um, you know, there are lots of bits and pieces that come into being a Christian, um, you know, are, are important, but they're not as important as the gospel preach. That's right. Um, so that's what we're here to do, and that's to preach the gospel, mm. to preach the good news. And, uh, you know, we can give that. We, we can give you that. Um, so hopefully uh, you tune in with us again next week. Um, I'll definitely be earlier. Um, sometimes work gets in a way and I'm praying about that <laughs> I'm hoping that God will give me a way out somehow <laughs> yeah, that's called death <laughs> or retirement I'll work till yeah. I die but yeah. I'd rather work in the service of the Lord than work for um, uh, cor the corporates of the world but here, here. in time Amen. God willing anyway thanks a lot everybody we'll just finish in a quick yeah, prayer pray. and, and we'll just you know say God um yeah. Do help us to yes. understand your word. Help yes. us to apply it in our lives. Yep. Help us to resist temptation, to mm -hmm. flee from it, deliver us from evil, yes. and lead us, God, um, so that we can be in the light and, yeah. and, and, and know the joy and the peace 
that comes from following you, the Good Shepherd, yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks a lot, Mick. Yeah. Thanks Good night. the two mics, as in Mike Cadaro, Nick Wise. Thanks, mate. Mm. Thanks, Nipper. And um, thank you all that will uh, watch later on. Um, yeah, hang in there with us. Um, you know, please give us questions. You know, if you really have anything that you're concerned about or something that you hear that you, you, didn't, you didn't like or you just think, hey, you know, hang on, that's a bit rough or just talk to us about it. You know, we... Or if you think the lighting needs to be better, things yeah, like that. Yeah, we think you know? we need to improve the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyhow. Yeah, so thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a great night, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Okay. God bless you all. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs>